all right boys and girls and mostly boys the long-awaited moment has come and what, I, what do I mean by that is that we will start making the low poly here <laughs> amazing I know but before that <laughs> we have a few more steps so first will be to take the weapon press M new collection Oop, weapon no weapon and put it inside this collection okay now the weapon should be in a separate collection yes so it will be easier to select it to uh, of course the easiest to just hide it which will be the best okay now we have to also separate some parts from each other this could be a little bit kind of a tricky but since i will move them only up and down especially the parts that have symmetry like the googles that i that have a mirror modifier i will move them just up and down so i will take basically the whole head and move it up because i will i would want it to be absolutely a separate mesh not separate mesh but i want it to be separated from the body like they did in the french revolution you know with the king and the queen just separate from the body it's very normal it's normal we will do that too now let's press g and then z and then move it up like here i think would be enough and then i will remove the teeth let me try to remove the teeth and the eyes okay the eyes will be okay now g and z again move them here and then i will separate g and z the teeth like this so why i'm doing this let's separate them a little bit more the idea here is to not um, bake for example if the teeth are in the mouth first it will be difficult to retopologize them but let's say we hide everything we retopologize them we show everything but after that when we have the low poly and the high poly and we bake if the teeth are in the mouth parts uh, of the lips will be baked into the teeth and the other way around which we don't want so uh yeah we'll do this uh, let's do only one thing we have multi-resolution here of the teeth uh, it looks relatively fine i don't hate it i'm not super convinced it's not the best i will disable the shadow by the way since it's just getting in my way mm. how many polygons is are this teeth so this is two hundred thousand which is kind of okay but i'm not um, completely happy with with this i want to make some poly paint here because i want the the gums to have color which would be easier if we have separate gums of course but in this case we don't have so yeah um, let's just go to edit mode let's try to select all those things here on the top like this and move them up like this why am i doing this because i think if the lips are going a little bit like up and if we don't have enough gum uh, we can have a serious issue that's why i'm doing this hopefully it will be fine but we'll see here it uh, didn't go as planned so i will go a little bit forward since i need it mostly in the forward position and like this i will drag it down a bit i will not drag it down too much although i have a lot of space here some some um, characters have a very low chin for example if a, it's a female character she will have kind of a, a thin and narrow chin and then if i do this too much down it will start to protrude from the chin which will not be exactly the best case scenario it will be a nightmare scenario also okay now this back part i'm not sure i want to have it so i will just delete those back areas they are absolutely not needed so i will just x and faces and then I'll press A and F. And let's see what happens. Yeah, it looks like this, which is not a, a super bad thing. I mean, it's it's bad. 
that basically is bad, but I can smooth it a little bit. And since this will never be visible, it's okay. From the front like this, you will never see this back part. So uh, in 3D, when we don't see something, it could be as horrible as possible. It doesn't matter that much. I will also delete these things here, X, faces, A, F, and probably this F, I will select it. What? It doesn't have? Ah, it has. Okay, and press I to insert, and then it will not be as bad as the previous one. But still not the best. Whatever, it doesn't matter. We will not even retopologize that. It's okay. For us, it's fine. The idea here is that I want to apply the multi-res modifier and probably combine those two. So you will notice that multi-res here is 3. If I uh, select the upper one, multi-res is 3. So if I go to object mode and select both and then control J to combine them, they again have the multi-res on 3. Both of them. So it's, it's pretty nice because now I can go down again. That's pretty useful. ZBrush has it too. But... For example, if one was multi-res at three and the other one was multi-res at four levels, when we combine them, what will happen? Multi-res at three, yes. The lowest multi-res number will remain. So uh, one of them will lose one low level of detail, which is not exactly, uh, almost never is a problem. Now, let's see how many polygons we have. <clears throat> We can subdivide it one more time because I don't like this uh, teeth. Although, I will go to Shade Smooth and they should be fine. Hopefully, this Shade Smooth, when I... Mm, but, yeah, if we had problems and we see that it doesn't bake right or something doesn't have enough resolution, we can always come back, increase the resolution, uh, export again and uh, do such stuff and we'll be able to do it, no problem. So, let me go to... A vertex paint, select some kind of a, yeah, this kind of color problem, and let's try to paint it. I'm not sure it will work because <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if you notice, but I am painting on the lowest subdivision here. When we have multi res, we paint on the lowest, we are not painting on the highest, which is annoying. Uh, and if I want to pay on paint on the highest subdivision to, pay, to paint on the a higher number of vertices, I would have to apply the multi res modifier, then paint, <clears throat> and then we will never have multi res modifier again. If, because I, if I put it on, the, the vertex paint will disappear not, most likely. So yeah, this we can do in Substance Painter too. It's not exactly a big issue. The big issue will be when we already have put the the teeth in the mouth, uh, we will not be able to do this because we will not have the, the visibility to do it. So, okay. Yeah, I will uh, probably leave it for now. And I would like to apply the multi res, but I don't want that, much, that many polygons, especially in the teeth. It's uh, just a little bit too much. Now, those are the sep things are separated. Let's select this area this thing here uh, with the object mode and select also this and this and move them a little bit on the side. I don't want them to be on my way here and I can start retopologizing. So how I started topologizing? Let's get to the real thing now. So in Blender, I just add a plane. Then I go tab and this plane I will scale. And for example, I always like to start from the arms, from the hands, from the fingers, because they are, for me, are the most uh, difficult thing. I mean, uh, yeah, I make the most difficult thing, which are the fingers, because between them you have to, you know, insert polygons there. It's a little bit difficult. But if we do this, then the rest will be a breeze. Then I will shift D and put another kind of copy of this plane here on the head, scale it down. The head polygons will be much smaller than the rest of the body uh, because we have more details on the head, so the polygons will be smaller. You will see. That's uh, most of the time it's true. For example, if the head is 
2000 triangles or 2050 or 3000 in this case it will be maybe around 2050 or 2500 or 3000 uh, the body the whole body can be around five six thousand so the head is kind of half of the body uh, which it's not about the volume it's about the detail it has a lot of detail i will add one more here to the teeth and th those are just uh, starting points i'm just adding them there putting them and they will kind of i will use them as a starting point of course yeah those should be a little bit smaller but we will make them smaller it's not a problem for the eyes i will use sphere and i will cut parts of the sphere it will not be just a sphere i will cut parts of it but let's start from this glove it looks a little bit difficult and then we will go to this one of course those will be a difficult and hard videos but we have to do it now first i will add new material i will go down 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 into viewport display and make it orange i like my uh yeah my things to be orange of course i have to go here to material and since i don't need the color this will be a good view because it will be very very uh visible what is my what is my low poly and what is my high poly obviously here we have to also increase some areas increase the resolution also here five hopefully it will not, not crash on me but whatever let's select again our plane and to start with topologizing what we need to do is be in edit mode we have to be in edit mode that's absolutely true and go to check this kind of a thing here on the top snap so the snap face and uh, probably closest will be fine and then i will check everything here and everything here on the bottom let's try that we can try that and we'll see if we, it will work so i will press one to go on vertex and i'm constantly changing between vertices and edges and uh, mostly i don't use uh, polygons here yeah so i don't see my mesh i can see it by alt z so this is the the mode that i sometimes work with but mostly i can go here on the this kind of a squarish thing which is object object properties and check in front and this always um, will make this to be in front of our you know of our mesh and we will always be uh, uh, visible it will always be visible the problem here is there are a lot of problems but we will got, get to them um let's now start to retopologize and we'll see so now for the edges i can scale them I can extrude them with E and then move. And uh, basically I will do this. Extrude, scale and such things. So for the fingers, most of our characters have only four sides. This character for this glove will have five sides. I decided to be like this. Yeah, it will be a little bit more geometry, but it will be fine. So what I'm doing now, uh, I'm extruding, but when I have this kind of thing, I go to the uh, vertex here and I press F. And this F is working, I think, because in edit, here on the top, edit, prop preferences, if you go to add-ons and press F2, uh, F2, just press F and then 2, mesh F2, if this is checked, this will work. If this is not checked, probably it won't work. So I've checked it and now it's working. So for me, this is working. So at the end, while I when I do the low poly, I'll most likely will mm, check it by hand. I always work by hand at the end. I always, always uh, inflate and do some st stuff only by by hand. I'm not uh, counting on this, you know, because this, if we uncheck on fr in front, it's a little bit too much in the mesh for my comfort. So the idea of the low poly is to, to uh, cover the whole thing, of course, as close as possible, but it has to retain the shape, the overall shape. And since we have so little amount of polygons, we have to be careful and sometimes we have to inflate a little bit more the low poly 
compared to the high poly. In this case, it's not inflated, it's the opposite way, the other way. So we'll see how it will go. But for now, it's okay. Now I will press here, I will press E to put it uh, around the middle of the finger in the, the bottom. And then I will have to press F to put it here. And then I will have to select those and press F. Yes, this seems like it has a lot of... Uh, it's not very good. I mean, it will not... Mm, yeah, it's not very nice, but we don't have too much choice because we don't have too much polygons to start with. So it will be a very low poly thing, but that's the idea. So if we have something like this, we can just select this edge here in the bottom and press F and it will fill it. So F is a pretty useful thing to, to have. Then I will scale this. Yeah, of course, sometimes we have to be careful what's behind our polygons because it could snap to anything. That's dangerous. Of course, this is always getting uh, taking a little bit of time to get used to uh, this. You have to you have to re apologize a lot of things to get used to this. It will not take uh, like uh, two minutes and I'm used to this and I'm starting to re apologize and I'm the best in re apologize. you know. Probably it will not be as easy. I'm just selecting with shift and then pressing F to make a polygon here. Let me see what I will do. Hmm. Yeah, I will press F in here and then F in here with edges. And then I will select this and F. And now it's one full finger, which is great. And what I can do is, and I always do that, I can take this finger and uh, it's not full by the way and combine it, I mean uh, to duplicate it and put it on the other fingers and just inflate and do whatever I have to do. And that's probably what I will do. But first, but first, or but first, yeah, I will do it but first. No, I will probably not do it but first, but whatever. Now, this doesn't look uh, super nice, but if we disable in front and then go to, for example, sculpt mode, I do this at the end, but let me see how it will work. So I will inflate just with the inflate brush. I will inflate this. And my idea is to just be able to see kind of 50-50 uh, the high poly and the low poly. So I will deflate at some points. I can grab with use the grab brush and move a little bit some of the polygons just to be able to make it so uh, for in the order for animators to not uh, get too mad at us we have to add a little bit more polygons here so i will do that on the finger yeah we have to we have to add more how many polygons we have we have 30 faces which is a lot for a finger but sometimes we have to then we go back to edit mode and here i will add one more loop uh, and probably this loop I will connect with M here. This will be where the finger will bend most likely M at center M. So I can cut also use the cut, use whatever I want. Let's see here. This is fine. Mm. Okay, I, I think I like this kind of finger and let's select it with A. By the way, with A, we have selected everything else. So what I will do is I will press L, just this press L and then separate selection. I don't want to, to select the other and uh, move them. There will be a separate thing. So I will go here and press A. Now I've selected only this. The others are separate objects now and I will press Shift D, move it. Of course, when I press Shift D and move it, I have to disable the snap from the top. And now I will be able to kind of adjust it and put it in position. I don't want to do it again because it will be a little bit slower. I want it to be like this. I will disable in front so I can see exactly what I'm doing. And of course, I will use 
probably the sculpting tools again, the grab brush especially, to just move it exactly where I want it. This finger. Yeah, sculpting I use the most in Blender, since I come from ZBrush, and this is more suitable for me. Of course, when I do a high poly, I mean not the high poly, when I do a something hard surface, I always use the normal hard surface methods. But yeah, sometimes I don't. Now, let's see. Here we have to be able to connect them somehow. So let me see how we will be able to do this. Probably this guy here, uh, I will go to edit mode and just disable this or delete it. Delete some faces. And hmm. yeah, let's show everything and see what will be interesting. So we will connect them in this dot here, in this, most likely. Uh, by the way, it's interesting, but let me see L and G. Ah, we have one more copy. L. Come on, L. And G. Okay, just one more copy. But this copy, I will uh, not lose it. I will use it for the other finger, of course. I don't know why, but uh, probably I pressed Alt D a few times more. And that's the problem. But it's not exactly a problem because I told you I will use it for the other finger. This is fine. And we will use it also for the rest, uh, for, the, for the final finger. The final finger. Yeah, the final finger is very interesting. Here, I will pull it down and we'll have to connect it with this dot. And we will basically M at center. And for the other arm, I will do a little bit more different, but we'll see. So here in the bottom, uh, I will delete this. Yeah, it may look a little bit uh, strange for you, and uh, probably it is. I will merge at last here, and this will go up. It's fine. Here I like it. Here in the bottom, let's see what we'll do in front. And yeah, let's continue by putting the symmetry on and starting to work. This should do. And in front, I will remove it. And let's see where this will, this will meet. Probably it will be around this area. And I will connect them. So M uh, at center is OK. Here, this is fine. I'll press G, move this. Here, I'll press F to connect. It uh, didn't connect exactly what I wanted. So yeah, it's a little bit complicated. I mean, for me, it's OK. But for somebody who is new, probably it will be like, huh, what is this guy doing? Magic. What? I mean, it's just sometimes uh, a little bit strange, it may look. I will do a triangle here, let's see. F. Mm -hmm. I don't need this triangle probably, but we'll see. And here I will have to press F again. Yes, this time is, is done. I will add two triangles in here and in here. And then here we'll have polygons. And yeah, you see what happened? It looks okay. And when I kind of move some of the vertices, they go exactly where they should be. Because we have snap on, of course, and that's the main thing. We kind of, most of the time we want snap on. Of course, I can disable snap at some point to just be able to manually adjust where the polygons will go. Because this finger, we haven't adjusted yet. Uh, the other way to adjust so uh, the, the things on the fingers, on the, on the mesh, is with shrink wrap modifier, of course. But in this case, it will not do us any good because uh, we have to make it very low poly and that's why we don't have the freedom to use whatever we want. 
and those polygons here, some polygons are red. We'll see why. Probably they are flipped. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, or just they're just red because they are from another material. Maybe. Who knows? It's interesting. Why are they red? But I don't care now. For now, I will just move with the grab brush, get into position, and yeah, you don't have to be super worried about where to put your polygons. Although with this low poly mesh, um, it's a, a little worrisome. If the the mesh is more high poly, it will be easier to cover the, all the things. But with this low poly, it's not that easy. Of course, here at some point I may decide to split those into two because otherwise it looks a little bit strange. But most likely it will bake fine, which is exactly what uh, I I want. And the inner part of the of the arm here, the inner part of the fingers, also will probably rarely be visible since he will mostly hold this like this and the top part will be visible that's why i have more polygons there yeah you have to consider all those things of course in the beginning when you are starting to do this uh, you will not be able to consider anything mostly but uh my let me tell you something very wise the more you make mistakes the more you will learn if you if the things happen from the first try you will not learn anything new and uh, the, the most I have learned when I have problems. When I bump into some trouble, I start to research what is this, why is this happening, why is it? And I'm learning. And also my brain is working, which is kind of great. Uh, if you kind of don't bump into any issues, uh, you will not learn. Of course, you will not lose also a lot of brain cells due to uh, frustration. But you will not learn also. So there are... That's that. Now, let's see why this is so sharp in here. I just want to... Uh -huh. We have the sharp, sharp, sharpie. Let's double click it. Shift E. And dial it down a bit. Not to be that sharp. I don't want it to be as sharp. This also. Dial it down a bit with... Okay, let's try it again. Shift E. Crease. Okay, uh, because the crease was too much, and that is what makes it bad. Okay. Now uh, you see that this pro process is kind of slow, especially for the fingers. They are kind of slow motion and, and I have to explain uh, everything. Now they're connected those fingers which is bad because I have to you know did do the rest. So I will select the fingers, press 3, select the, the end here. Let's go to edit mode of course. Select the end and control plus maybe up to here. Okay I don't need more. And then shift D. Shift D of course is duplicating and I will put it here and this will be fine. I will go to scope mode and with that I will put my mm, double kind of geometry or this area here in the knuckle in the in the place where the finger is bending. So it's not exactly the knuckle where it's bending but whatever. And yeah so this thing with the grab brush and the inflate brush and everything, I most of the time uh, leave it for the last. And I go through all the model and I spend like half an hour or even more to just make sure everything is in the correct position manually. And for this kind of models, which have very low poly count, it's okay. If you're not doing for it for mobile game, you're doing it for a PC game, good for you. Uh, but uh, I'm doing it for mobile games, so I have to be... It's also on PC, yes, but um, it's also on mobile. So we have to be kind of, you know, careful. Let's go to edit mode. And let's see where we'll select this. I will go and enable snap. 
and uh, here I want this and this to merge at last. So here, this I'll probably merge with this merge at last, and uh, it's starting to look nice. I'm just improvising here, as you can see. I will press E to do this, then I will go here, press G to move, and most likely I will connect those because I don't need that much. Or else M at last, then press F here and press F in here. Hopefully this will give us some fingerish idea of what's happening. Here I can press F and have a polygon again and again. And yeah, in the beginning, I was frustrated as you, as probably you are. Um, and it was difficult for me to to select uh, something. Into, and if I have to be honest, I've really apologized really a character in Blender only once for production. But it was a huge right boss character. So it was enough for me to kind of grab it. Of course, yeah, I can collapse it at center. Of course, huh, the overall... The overall idea of retopologizing, I know, because I've retopologized numerous characters in 3D Max, in ZBrush, and now I'm starting in Blender. Uh, and the idea of retopologizing is, is the important thing. Then the, the tools, you just have to get used to them. It's not exactly a big issue. If you have retopologized in other programs like Topogon or Maya, you will be pretty comfortable at some point when you get used to the tools here. So, yeah. I'm pretty confident that uh, everybody can do it. So I will make this and then R to rotate and then F here, F, F. I probably want to connect those, but not yet. And then uh, what I like to do most of the time is go to one polygon, extrude it, and then extrude it here. And then I start from this area. What do I mean? Let me show you. I go here and start putting the polygons in their positions, like this, and then extrude with E, extrude again, and hopefully here I will have a nice ground. Of course, sometimes I don't do it properly. And from here I can continue back to the glove, and I will meet them in the middle. And this I can absolutely delete for now. The idea here is that uh, we don't have to start from one place and just move up from there because sometimes we can bump to a very difficult how to how to convert from from this to this. But if we go to this area to the difficult area and make it, then easily we'll be able to proceed. And you will see why. What I mean by that. How much time we have? Oh, wait, 33 minutes. I plan to do this retopologizing videos a little bit longer because they are. Uh, the retopology itself takes a little bit more time, and um, I'll have to just make it longer. That's completely normal. So let's see how this will go. I will press F here. I'm pressing F. Here, do I have to retopologize this area? Probably yes. Why not? Sometimes I feel generous. You know, I will give a little bit more polygons, not too much. I mean, this is not uh, something uh, great or grandiose or whatever. It's fine. By the way, I will not cover this probably with polygons. I mean, this lip here, I will just go over it uh, because sometimes we don't, we are not that generous with polygons. And uh, the idea here is that I will surround with polygons only the the things that are making the the most silhouette because i have to be kind of careful with the polygons i have to save them that's why i'm surrounding only the necessary portions of the image and you see how big polygons are here in the same uh in the same uh, 
position in the same place in the same square edge on the face the polygons will be three times more probably three times as much which is yeah i know it may sound silly but it's true and i told you because the face has more detail here we don't have too much detail we just have to follow the silhouette of the meshes so now uh, here we, we see this which means that we have to enable back face curl which i'm not sure where it was let's try here back face curl we have to disable it not enable it i'm not sure i can do it but face orientation yeah we have this Mm, let me think. Sometimes I just go and think because I don't have any other choice. A back face curling. Oh yeah, this. I think this is better for now. But this will be okay. Now let's continue on the thumb because it's also kind of a complicated. And when we finish with this, with the fingers and the other hand too because... We have to do the other hand and this character is a little bit more complicated in this matter because both hands are different most characters that i do they have symmetrical hands this character doesn't so i have to do them separately which makes me sad but uh, true makes me sad but true okay okay doesn't matter uh don't don't just uh you know don't pay attention too much what I say. Pay attention what I do. Huh? Yeah. That's the opposite of uh, the father that is telling the kids to not smoke. Well, you should not smoke. Smoking is very bad for your health. I have to do it. Very bad. Very bad. Don't smoke. But I'm telling you the opposite. I'm telling you some things and I'm doing... No, it's the same. If I tell you something and I do something else, it's the same. <laughs> so, yeah. But the idea here is that uh, when we have no symmetrical character, we are screwed. And when we have no symmetrical character, what happens is we go into depression. Um, then our immune system starts to give up. Then some illnesses starts to take us and at some point we die or we just uh, get sick which is also a possibility of course but the idea here is that uh, hopefully i'm kind of explaining how this retopology works of course we have to know basics of uh basics of blender although you don't need to know them exactly since i'm explaining almost everything i do exactly what it is for example i'm pressing g to move i'm pressing g to move i'm extruding with e okay nice i will meet this here with f yeah f is kind of a bridge and some other things f is a pretty powerful f here and you also can see it here so don't tell me that this is uh, very difficult to follow because you're not explaining everything. You're speaking about illnesses and you're speaking about mm, some uh, very depressing stuff and I'm crying. No, no. Don't be that guy. I mean, it's it's fine. I think I explained pretty much well what I'm doing. And some of you, I know, know more than me for about blender although you probably cannot do characters exactly but you know a lot of things about the hard surface modeling and stuff like this so don't hesitate to give some advices some tips secrets whatever i'm okay with that because i don't say i'm the best in blender no i'm not but i'm one of the best in blender when it comes to characters that's a fact because uh, i don't know any other person personally i know a lot of character artists that are working in the industry 
no one is using Blender. And I started using Blender because it, it's kind of a challenge. I said to myself, can I? Can I use Blender really in production? Can I do my work, my job in my company? It's not my company, it's Gameloft, it's a big company. But can I do it only in Blender? It's uh, very, very curious. I was curious. And that's why I kind of pushed myself because, you know, to learn another program, it's pushing. You have to push yourself. But I had this, I had this uh, kind of a motivation. Exactly. Motivation was the word that I'm seeking. So I have this motivation that I will be able to inspire and teach other people to also use Blender. And that's why also I'm doing this um, kind of a series, yes, in, in, uh, in YouTube. Because many people, since probably my courses of Blender, of character making, will be concentrated more on sculpting, more on anatomy, more on high poly modeling. Uh, many people will say, oh, but we want a course for low poly making and UVs. Yeah, it's free. It's, it's in YouTube. It's this one. So go just and watch it. I don't have to do for every character to do the low poly and stuff because the low poly making, as you can see, is kind of a mm, dirty job, we may say. Yeah, it's it's something that nobody, no character artist wants to really do. Although, uh, one of my colleagues, he told me that uh, these days he just wants to make low polys. He likes to make them because it's, if I'm not speaking, for example, I would be listening to music and I will just do it very, very lightly. Um, nothing to worry about, just putting polygons here and there. It's it's not a something very bad. I mean, there are worse things that you can do. For example, fight in a war. Yeah. Uh, in the winter, which is happening right now in Ukraine. But whatever, we don't have to talk about that. Since this is not a political channel, this is not anything like that, but uh, we cannot be robots or something. We can always kind of see what's happening. I'm, I thought that I'm a kind of a psycho, 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 yeah. And I thought that I don't care about uh, other people, but I, um, maybe I don't, maybe I don't care about other people. I care about, my, about myself and I'm, but I'm, I kind of imagine myself in the place of those people which are in Ukraine now and uh, just trying to survive. Just normal people trying to survive. It's... It makes me very sad. And depressed at the same time. Uh, yeah, somebody said about depression in the <clears throat> Facebook group that I manage. I recently made a Facebook group. <clears throat> for my students mostly, but anybody can join, of course, with, with who wants to kind of improve itself, himself and have some feedback from other people. I will try to keep it more not official, but whatever. Uh, yeah, some people will ask me, where is the link to this Facebook group? The Facebook group name is Speed Char uh, Character Courses Group or something like this. I don't even know the name of my group, but whatever. It's not very important yet. It has not many members, like maybe three, 300 or something. But hopefully it will get a little bit bigger at some point. But mostly I made it just so my students can kind of communicate to each other and, uh, you know, ex exchange ideas. Stuff like this. And now I'm uh, retopologizing the hairs, which is also a hideous and ungrateful job. <laughs> but somebody has to do it, yeah. What's happening here? Okay. Control Z and Control Alt Z sometimes are working wonders. So now you see I'm going through the hairs, making them, and then going again to this position here and working, working here. Because I told you that Sometimes it's easier to just go to the problem zone and do the things there instead of trying to connect, trying to uh, to do everything in one area and then uh, to float into the other area. And this floating will be a different thing, difficult, difficult, yeah, difficult. 
different. <laughs> My English is the best sometimes. And I'm sure that I speak with a lot of accent, since I cannot exactly concentrate on speaking clearer English and work at the same time. If I'm speaking in Bulgarian, most of the time I'm speaking pretty fluent and I don't look as, as stupid. But, you know, you know how people that are speaking foreign language, which they don't completely understand, not, not they don't understand, they completely, uh, it's not their language. So they don't know exact words which to put sometimes. And they look a little bit more stupid. But when you hear them, how they speak in their own language, you say, wow, this guy is uh, pretty, you know, pretty intelligent, it looks like. Because, yeah, for example, if I try to speak Russian, which I kind of understand a little bit, I understand it a lot, but I don't speak it that much. So it will be, I will look pretty stupid because I will be like, uh, mm, uh, I will try to remember the word and I will look like I'm stupid. Just, I cannot say it. But I don't consider myself as stupid since you know, most people know two languages. I know almost three. And I know, I know little Spanish, just a tiny bit of Spanish, like a few words. I knew, by the way, like three, 300 words at least I knew in Spanish. But I forgot them. Uh, but it will be easier to remember them if I kind of uh, go running to some Spanish country. I'm considering Costa Rica, by the way, to run away from... From what? From the war. But hopefully, if you are watching this few years from now, the war is over and everything is okay. But who knows? Maybe the Earth has disappeared and you are watching as some kind of alien. And the Earth was uh, has disappeared because of the nuclear war, of course. The nuclear thing. Hmm. It's not good. Let's see how much time we have. So it's 47 minutes. I think we can kind of, uh, you know, finish for now. We will continue with the thumb and the other parts of the glove and the other hand in the next video. And after that, I will start the head. Maybe two videos we will make the head or three. I'm not sure. And then we will continue with the body, which will be the most easiest part. Although around the around the chain will be not a super easy probably and we'll make a lot of mess there but we'll see we'll see let's see what is this this is kind of a thing that i will just no x vertices yes i delete some vertices which is just uh, away from everything so see you in the next video and i hope that you know how to start your retopologizing now so you just put a plane on just scale it and put it in position, then turn this on, face, closest, everything on, everything on, and probably turn on this in front, here, in the viewport display of your object properties, and in edit mode, just start to extrude, start to move with G, extrude with E, and sometimes bridge with F, or just do this with F this thing. Amazing. Yeah, I'm continuing to work. And this video is not over. Why? I don't know. But it has to be over at some point. Let's just get in front out and see what happens here. Yeah, we will inflate it later. And if we if needed, I will cut and add more polygons even. Uh, because sometimes we have to. But I will not use the the modifier which is the, the shrink wrap modifier i will not use it now because sometimes this modifier is messing the things up especially in the super low poly that i'm doing so i will just rely on the snapping and just continue here when we finish the the glove and a little bit go to the arm here we will go to the other hand because it's kind of difficult with these nails and everything it will be even more difficult probably than this one Although, the distance between the fingers, no, here is not too much, so, yeah, it will be hard. But, 
The hardest parts, are, as I told you, are the arms, the hands with the fingers and the head. And also when we have chains. So basically this character is all hard, except for the, the belly, which is not that hard, but whatever. It's just a thing that not 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 hard and the head the good thing is we have to do only half of the head the other half of the head will be a mirror and also this uh, is also true for the for the legs mm, but there will be a little bit of a problem here because this part here will throw shadow and ambient occlusion on this part of the leg and if it's completely symmetrical here we'll also have black things from this occlusion which is a big issue and uh, i probably will make only the bottom part of the legs symmetrical which is awful it will be symmetrical uh when i retopologize it but then in the uvs i have to make unique uvs for the upper part of the legs which is which i now realize and i'm pretty sad about it because every unique uv you have to do is taking your UV space a little bit more and a little bit more. Hopefully, uh, I will have to ask the superiors, but the weapon will be at the separate texture. Because if the weapon is the same texture, uh, it will be pretty awful. Bye for now. And no, let's save it as, 30, as 23. Save us and see you in the next video.